Hi guys, it's Aoife from Rose of Clover and I am here to do my first part of my December wrap up. I've had a really great start to the month. I definitely thought it's probably one of my better reading months I think this year. So the first book I want to talk about is a book that kind of was left over from my November wrap up and my non-fiction um, November TBR and I just hadn't quite finished it by the time I had um, filmed my last wrap up. That was The Good Girls by Sonia Falero. This is a book that is based around the kind of murder investigation into these two young women. They went missing in the evening and then in the morning their bodies were found hanging from this tree and it wasn't too long since the Delhi bus rape um, incident. It was about two years after this so there was a real kind of lens in India at, the, at that time of um, of violence against women and particularly sexual violence against women. So this case ended up kind of blowing up and it became quite a big news story and I remember international news reporting on this as well and there was never really anything um, concrete I think around what actually happened to the girls and this is a look into what actually happened to the girls, who they were, what the village was like, the months surrounding this incident, the kind of police investigation, the corruption in India at the time and within the investigation itself within the police. While I do find this story really interesting and I found most of what I found interesting in this was kind of the way people lived um, in this village and just the stark look at poverty in India even in today's age. This was only in 2014, it was only six years ago and the poverty that people were living in was just quite astounding and quite surprising even for me and it just really kind of took me aback at how these people were living, particularly women and the lack of resources that particularly girl ch children were being given in terms of education and just opportunity and just how sad it was that, you know, how they were being treated. These kind of really kind of old fashioned ideas about what women should be in this book when it happened not so long ago. The problem I had with this book is that the investigation itself and the story is just so jumbled up. The author really had her case cut out for her when she was investigating this. I think she did it as well as she could. There was just so many different tales and there's different takes on what the girls, what could have happened to the girls. The key witness changed his statements about like six or seven times. There was a lot of Bruce police brutality around that as well and it was very hard to figure out exactly what had happened and you know if this was really a murder case or if it was something else, if it was indeed a suicide like it was eventually deemed to be. So there was also a lot of in this that I found interesting around the Indian caste system which I don't know that much about um, and a, a little bit of it did go over my head but I did find it a little quite interesting it's something I would like maybe to read more of um, in the future and really figure it out and there's also a lot of things around kind of Indian politics as well that isn't something obviously that I am well versed in so that did kind of you know I kind of had to skim over those bits as well because I just wasn't ever going to understand them. I kind of so while I definitely like admire the author for going and for really trying with this book I just feel like the story itself was just so there was just so much in it and it was so complicated and it was so jumbled that it was always going to be hard to really get like a really solid book out of it. So I gave this book a two out of five stars overall. The next book I read was a book on audiobook that I received through NetGalley and that was Meet Me in London by Georgia Toflo. Georgia Toflo I think she was on Made in Chelsea or something and then she was also on I'm a Celebrity. But I was really interested in the story and it was kind of a Christmassy contemporary romance um, set in London that I just thought would be really nice for the Christmas season and it definitely was. This is a this is about a girl called Victoria who ends up in this kind of fake dating relationship with a man called Oliver who owns this like really big department store who's or whose family owns this big department store on her street and the department store is in danger of kind of taking away business from the other smaller um, store owners and Victoria kind of is talking with Oliver in trying to get him to incorporate the other store owners and think about them as well as thinking about his big department store in terms of the run up to Christmas and what they can do together and Victoria is a aspiring a fashion designer so the two of them kind of create this kind of fashion show that she's going to do with some of these students that she teaches. And because Oliver is doing this for her, she decides that she's going to help him out and basically pretend to be his fake fiance and in front of his family because there are some family reasons why he wants to kind of make his family happy around Christmas. But obviously the two of them are extremely attracted to each other and they do kind of want to be together. But there are two, there are things kind of on either side kind of stopping them from really going for it. This was really sweet. It was like just what it was in the day, which was sweet and fun. And there was loads of nice kind of romance bits in it. It wasn't too steamy. 
it wasn't too Christmassy either. I feel like you could read this throughout the year. It's kind of leads, it's more in like the run up to Christmas, more so than Christmas itself. And Christmas itself, it kind of ends at Christmas. So it's not actually super Christmassy. So you could read this any time of the year. I don't know if this is ghostwritten or not, but I did actually find the writing fairly good. There were some bits that were quite description heavy. And then there were times where the author, or the, there were times where the characters would go into these like thought, like dialogues with themselves in the middle of a conversation. And it would go on forever until it actually went back to the actual conversation that was happening and that would get a little bit tedious especially when I was listening to it on audiobook. I will say that Victoria had this really great group of friends in this book that are a real central point to her life. They're one of the biggest things in her life is this group of friends that she has and I really love that and there are going to be more books in this series I think set around the different friends and different rom romantic relationships relationships they are going to have and I'm actually really looking forward to that I think that'll be really really fun there is some talk in this book as well around infertil infertility and the struggles with infertility and um, to do with Victoria and an accent that she had when she was younger meaning that she's not going to be able to carry her own child and there is some issues that she's dealing with about that and there are some times where she thinks about herself or in cases of some terrible characters in this book where she's almost told that she's broken and no one will really want to be with her because she can't give them children and she has all these kind of internal struggles around that which I'm sure if you are struggling with infertility might be really difficult to read and I think some of the language around this as well and around sometimes Victoria's thoughts about herself being like not really complete or she's broken in some way or damaged um it wasn't great and I'm not sure if it was a kind of completely resolved near the end of the book but overall I did really enjoy this book so I gave it a three out of five stars. The book I read was The Caged Queen by Kristen Cicerelli. This is the second book in the Iscari series. The first book is The Last Name Sarah which I read a couple of months ago and I gave it I think three out of five stars. I found it a bit meh. I liked some bits of it. I didn't like other bits so I wasn't really sure going into this one because it's not a direct like it's not a direct sequel, it's more of like a spin-off sequel, but you're still following some of the politics that happened in the first book. Um, but you thought you were focusing on different characters, you were focusing on a different part of the world. I actually really like this book, which is surprising because most people who liked the first one didn't like this one. I didn't really like the first one, but I like this one a lot more. We are following a character called Roa, who when she was younger, her sister Essie, Essie died in a tragic accident, but her soul is now in the form of this bird that's always around Roa. But Roa knows that kind of like Essie's soul needs to be freed somehow she's not going to be around forever and if she kills the king she might be able to get Essie's soul back and like get Essie back for good the only problem is the king is actually her husband who she married in an arranged marriage she's kind of torn between this you know potential love that she has for her husband or the love that she has for her sister I did really like the character the, the character kind of growth in this with Roa I found like there was a lot of internal struggles that you kind of really feel for her at times I really liked that she was like this warrior she was really strong there were times where she could be a bit obstinate and a bit rude and a bit uncaring and there were times that she made really stupid decisions and like miscommunication and those kind of things but overall I did really enjoy this book I liked the kind of dips in and outs of characters we had known from the first book and how the story kind of continued on without it being a direct sequel as I said but I'm really looking forward to the third book because the third book is based around this character who is actually one of the most interesting characters in the world. And I'm really looking forward to the third book for this character. The next few books I have read um, during my Christmas kind of readathon vlogs, and I've talked a little bit about them, so I'm not going to talk about them too much here. So the first book was Christmas Island by Natalie Norman, which is about a girl called Holly, I think. And she has basically traveled to this Norwegian island to spend Christmas with her brother. That's the island. She meets the island hermit and kind of they end up in this kind of strange relationship where they're kind of friends, they kind of fancy each other and while she's learning about this, all the Norwegian Christmas traditions and trying to figure out what she wants to do when she gets back home to London, waiting on an email that's basically going to make her break her career. She kind of gets to know this guy, um, I think his name is Thor. She was very sweet, it's quite chaste in a way, but it's very sweet. I really enjoyed all the Christmas traditions, Norwegian Christmas traditions in this book, particularly the food. This book has really great food descriptions that will make you really hungry and I really enjoyed that. And it was just a nice Christmassy read. I did really enjoy this, I gave it a three and a half out of five stars I think. The next book I read was The Christmas Swap by Sandy Barker, which is a little bit like The Holiday, Holiday where we are following these three girls. They've been friends since they were about 11 years old when they met on a childhood holiday. And they 
they've kind of kept in touch and they're really great friends and they've gone on holidays together and stuff like that and then one year it's either for Christmas they're going to swap so the girl who, who has grown up in England she's going to go over to Colorado the girl from Colorado goes to Melbourne in Australia and the girl from Australia goes and spends Christmas in this little um, English village and once they are there they kind of get to know uh, the families of their friends and they also end up in these specific romantic relationships once they're there this was enjoyable in terms of I really like kind of seeing Christmas celebrated in different situations. I liked the friendship between the girls. I will say all the romantic relationships happened very, very, very quickly. All the boys of interest were absolutely perfect. There was nothing wrong with any of them. It was a little bit unbelievable to be honest in that sense. And also I found, I really felt like the author missed a trick by having all of these girls in straight relationships. I would have really liked to have at least one of these girls been in a queer relationship because I think that just would have been really nice to have just to have in there and for like a Christmas queer relationship I think people are crying out for them and I think it just would have been a really great opportunity so I was actually kind of disappointed that that wasn't in there. I did also find myself getting bored of this book around halfway through I just didn't think there was enough happening there wasn't enough drama in it I do like sometimes in these books where there is that dr dramatic moment halfway through the book where the characters have to overcome something and that never really happened in this book and I found myself missing it so I gave it like a two and a half three out of five stars overall it wasn't my favorite but it wasn't the worst book ever either. The next book I read was a five star read and I absolutely loved it and that was Pull the Stars by Emma Donoghue. This is based in 1918 Dublin and it is around the great flu epidemic that happened and we are following a character called Julia who is a nurse on a maternity ward and she is dealing with pregnant women who have come down with this flu and she's trying to basically protect them and their unborn children and she's basically working against the clock constantly and basically on her own. This book was so intense like I felt so connected to the characters. I did not want it to end. I didn't want the I didn't want the nurse character Julia to leave her patients at any point in the book because I was so invested in what was going to happen in them. There was a very sweet relationship that blossomed in this book as well between Julia and another character. It's a female female relationship. I enjoyed seeing that starting to blossom and play out on the page. That was just really sweet. This book just made me like it made my heart race. It just I couldn't put it down. It's a the first book in a long time I felt really like addicted to that I just could not stop reading. I really loved the kind of look at the political situation in Ireland at the time being that that we were still under um, English rule at the time. There were people who there was also the World War One going on and there was the situation between Irish soldiers going off to World War One fighting under the English flag and then coming home and being called traitors because they were fighting the English for the English rather than fighting the English at home. Some interesting commentary around the 1916 um, rising that happened in Ireland and how the civilians on the ground viewed that at that time which is very different to how we view it now in history. I absolutely love this. I will say the ending is not the happiest ending. Um, it's a little bit sad, so just a warning going into that. So I gave it a five out of five stars. I just love this book so much. The next book I read was for the Patreon book club for Lauren and the Books, and that was The Miracle on Ebenezer Street by Catherine Doyle. This is basically a middle grade novel that's a retelling of A Christmas Carol. We are following a little boy called George, whose mom died a few years ago. She died on, I think, Christmas Eve or just shortly before Christmas. And ever since then, his dad has just like not wanted to celebrate Christmas, has been a massive screw and has basically like sucked all the joy of Christmas out of George and George's granny and both of them would love to celebrate Christmas would love to go and see his cousins who he hasn't seen in a few years um, and they just haven't been able to because his dad has just been really horrible about it and then one day George comes across this magical shop it's kind of like a toy shop slash miracle shop and he ends up getting this magical snow globe and he's basically able to cast these miracles to try and get his dad's Christmas spirit back and to stop him from being a Scrooge. This is just fun it's so full of like Christmas magic and childhood wonder and you know purple reindeers and wooden elves who talk and love to sit in shelves and there's just so much to love in this there's like lots of little bits that you can laugh at and I just really really enjoyed this one and it's definitely a perfect one for the Christmas season it's a great one for adults to read but also for kids to read and I say for parents to read to their children as well it's a really sweet book the only thing I was disappointed about in this book was the fact that it is written by an Irish author but it was set in London and I would have just loved for it to have been set in Dublin or somewhere else in Ireland and yeah that's the only bit I was really kind of disappointed at with this book so I gave it a four out of five stars the last book I read was the snow song song by Sally Gardner slash Ray Delaney and this is like a feminist fairy tale. 
that unfortunately completely missed the mark for me. We're following a character called Edith who falls in love with this man called, this man who is the shepherd, but her father has promised her to a man in the village called the butcher, who is not a very nice man. And then she promises her father that she will marry the butcher if the shepherd doesn't come home by the first snowfall. And this kind of basically triggers these trail of events in this village that ends up with Edith losing her voice and the village completely changing in a, in a way. This was fine. I listened to it on audiobook and the narrator did a fine job, but I just think the story just didn't gel with me. There was nothing inherently wrong with this book or the writing. It just didn't gel with me. I just didn't enjoy my reading experience of it. I found it a little bit depressing in that there were some characters in it, like the butcher, who were just so terrible and so horrible that it was just like depressing and it just made me feel down to read about this man and all the things that he was doing and all the things he got away with and I just felt like the story dragged on a little bit. It was this lovely like fairy tale quality to it and I like the overall message of it in terms of giving women freedom and giving women their voice and giving them their own choices. There was some lovely descriptions and lyrical writing in it but again overall I just didn't enjoy the story and it's just one of those things for me. There was nothing wrong with this book, I just didn't like it. So I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. So those are all the books I've read so far in December, a really great amount. Um, if you guys have read any of these books, what you guys are reading at the moment, I would love to know. Let's chat in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye!